I love taking care of my mom. It wasn't easy at first. She learned how to better communicate her needs. And you learned how to not ignore yours. I discovered how to make healthier meals. And I discovered how much I enjoyed them. Becoming a caregiver is a learning experience for everyone. Find articles, tips, and tools from experts and others who have been in your place. The Caregiving Resource Center at aarp.org slash caregiving. Hello, this is Alfred Brock with another episode of Data Central. Today we're going to be talking about, <clears throat> we're going to have our local, our state and our national news items. First one we have here is our local one. We're going to be talking about health again. And this particular item uh, we're going to be talking about today is overweight and obesity here in Michigan. And this information has been provided to us by the Center for Disease Control. And uh, so uh, we'll talk about that. There's all sorts of things and wonderful things going on in the city of Wayne. Uh, lots of activities. You can ride a bicycle, you can walk outside, you go play in the parks. And uh, our neighboring cities and villages and towns have many, 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 many interesting things to do. So you can get outside and walk around and move around. If you're, if you're, if you're, if you're in the house and you got to stay in the house, right, there's still exercises you can do, right? Talk to your doctor, talk to your exercise dude. If you don't know who to speak to, reach out and ask some questions and you'll get the answer. So let's go on with overweight and obesity here. And this document is from the Central, uh, uh, <clears throat> Centers for Disease Control. And we're talking about specifically about Michigan right now, but we're gonna take that as the, um, we're gonna zoom in on Wayne. Zoom in on Wayne City, okay? So in Michigan, a state nutrition, physical activity, and obesity profile. We're gonna re be reading through this and then you'll be able to look it up. You can look it up online. Just go to CDC or type in Michigan, State Nutrition, Physical Act Activity, and Obesity Profile. So obesity has important consequences on our nation's health and economy. It is linked to a number of chronic diseases, uh, including coronary heart disease, stroke, diabetes, and some cancers. That's from the National Institute of Health Clinical Guidelines, 1998. Uh, now, among adults, the medical costs associated with obesity are estimated at $147 billion each year, right? Many American communities are characterized by unhealthy options when it comes to diet, and we're working right now. And you should, I encourage you to come on and participate to uh, get some of the healthy choices here and healthy options here in the city, in, in Wayne City. Now, when it comes to uh, um, Many American communities are characterized by unhealthy options when it comes to diet and physical activity, right? Terrible. We need public health approaches that make healthy options available, accessible, and affordable for all Americans. Now, this is good stuff, right? They're talking about this stuff, but they're far away. We're right here. This belongs to us. This is a good idea. I like it. How about you? Let's check out what else they have to say. Now, Michigan, the CDC's uh, Division of Nutrition and Physical uh, and, and Obesity, the D this is an actual department, DMPAO, supports the nation's capacity to address public health in all policies and establish successful and sustainable interventions to support healthy eating and active living. And hey, that's going on right now in Wayne City. So come on and join us all. Um, the division provides support, that is information and evaluation guidance, technical assistance, training, surveillance, what? Okay. And applied research, translation and dissemination, and partnership development. And we're doing a lot of partnering here in the city, in Wayne City. So come on in, partner up. There we go. Uh, to states, communities, and national partners to implement policy, system, and environmental strategies. The goal is to improve dietary quality, increase physical activity, and reduce obesity across multiple settings, such as child care facilities, workplaces, hospitals, and medical care facilities, schools, and communities. Well, we got all those here, so we're on top of that. Now, the state population of Michigan, estimated in 2010, was 9,883,640. And I know some, some new folks have joined us, so that the number is high. Adults aged 18 and over are 76.3% of the total population. So 23.7% of the uh, total population are youths under the age of 18. That's from the U.S. Census Bureau, by the way. Now, adult overweight uh, and obesity, 66.1% uh, were overweight with a body mass index of 25 or greater. So get chalked out by your doctor. Find out what's good, what's good for you. Your body is unique. You are unique. But check it out. 30.9% were recorded as being obese with a body mass index of 30 or greater. So got to work on that if necessary. Find out specifically from your doctor because you're going to have unique... Uh, um, uh, qualities to your own body, right? It's you. Dietary behaviors. Now, 32.1% of adults reported having consumed fruits at the recommended level of two or more times per day. 
Go Michigan. We get the fruit trees. Hopefully they're coming back, right? Plant a fruit tree. 23.9% of adults reported having consumed vegetables at the recommended level of three or more times per day. I know I try to do that. And physical activity. 46.4 of adults achieved at least 300 minutes a week of moderate intensity aerobic physical activity or 150 minutes a week of vigorous intensity aerobic activity or an equivalent combination. So moving around, even if you're stuck in a chair, is very important. 23.6% of Michigan's adults reported that during the past month they had not participated in any physical activity. Come on, let's make it 100% physical activity participation. Come on out. Wayne City's got a lot to offer, and all around. Michigan's cool. Adolescent overweight and obesity. Now, for the 14%, uh, 14.2% uh, 14 were overweight uh, for for their BMI by age and sex based on reference data. And that's, you know, you got to work that out with the kids and talk to the doctor, talk to the nutritionist, eat what's right, be healthy. Uh, now, unhealthy dietary behaviors, so food consumption. 68.4% uh, uh, ate fruits or, or drank 100% fruit juice less than two times per day during the seven days before the survey. And uh, here we may be looking at the hunger problem here in, in Michigan, where one in five children is uh, um, food, um, uh, uh, they're not food secure. And that's terrible. Vegetable com consumption, 88.4% ate vegetables less than three times per day during the seven days before the survey. This includes green salad, potatoes, and excludes french fries, fried potatoes, or potato chips, carrots, or other vegetables. Uh, sugar sweetened beverage consumption, 27.6% drank a can, bottle, a glass of soda, or pop, uh, not including diet soda or diet pop, at least one time per day during the seven days before the survey. So pop is really popular. Physical activity, uh, only 25.3% were physically active for a total of at least 60 minutes per day on each of the seven days prior to the survey. Whoa! We could change that. Participated in daily physical education, 31% uh, of adolescents attended daily physical education classes in a week when they were in school. 31% of the 100% that were in school went to, woo. Physical inactivity, no activity. 14.2% did not participate in at least 60 minutes of physical activity on any day during the seven days prior to the survey. Now, television viewing time, 29.6% uh, watched television three or more hours per day on an average school day. And that will definitely, you're hungry and you're watching TV all the time, you're gonna have school problems? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, the 2010 uh, Michigan School Health Profiles assessed the school environment, indicating that among high schools, 26.7% did not sell less nutritious foods and beverages anywhere outside the school food service um, program. 16.8% always offered fruits or non-fried vegetables in vending machines in school stores, canteens, or snack bars, and during celebrations whenever foods and beverages were offered. 49.4% prohibited all forms of advertising and promotion of candy, fast food restaurants, or soft drinks in all locations. All school-related locations were defined as in school buildings, on school grounds, including on the outside of the school building, on playing fields or other areas of the campus, on school buses or other vehicles used to transport students and in school publications. So this is, uh, got to look at that. I invite you to please look at this report uh, to get more information out of it, especially about the school activity here. Child overweight and obesity, let's move on. Breastfeeding, increased, uh, increasing breastfeeding initiation duration and exclusivity is a priority strategy in the Center for Disease Control's efforts to decrease the rate of childhood obesity throughout the United States. 69.3% of infants were ever breastfed and 42.9% of infants were breastfed for at least six months. Uh, body mass in index, uh, we're gonna, okay. 16.3% uh, of children apparently were over eight, uh, overweight between age two years to less than five years. Uh, now, Michigan's, the state of Michigan's response to obesity, which they provided to the CDC, but uh, now you're hearing about it, so go online and get the report, right? Michigan Nutrition, Physical Activity, and Obesity, MNPAO, they have a department two program, works with local health departments and community coalitions through building healthy communities to create policies and environments supportive of healthy eating and physical activity with the goal of reducing obesity and related chronic diseases. By 2010, community-based programs have actively engaged nearly 400 part local partners and 1.2 million residents in projects such as enhancing 10 public parks, covering 192 acres of recreational lands, 
creating or improving 72 miles of walking trails, building 11 new bicycle facilities, and providing new equipment, park benches, outdoor lighting, or signage in public parks to increase their safety and recreational use. Other BHC uh, projects include planting 11 new neighborhood and school gardens, initiating sale of fruits and vegetables at nine strategic locations, including gas stations and convenience stores. Ah, well, that's cool, man. I, I know I've gone in there a lot and I was looking around for fruit and couldn't find it at the gas station. Within reach of disparate populations, um, creating six new farmers markets and equipping eight existing markets with electronic transfer technology used to process food stamps. The Michigan NPAO supports building healthy communities with training resources and technical assistance. Hey, I want to learn more about these folks. How about you? Now, there's also a faith-based faith initiative. In partnership with the Institute for Black Family Development, the NMPAO is working with African-American churches in the Detroit area to implement policy, environmental, and social support programs that promote healthy eating and physical activity. 24 participating churches represent, representing all major African-American Christian denominations have used Michigan's Promoting Healthy Congregation Toolkit to assess their physical activity and nutrition environments. Isn't that great? That's wonderful. M and PAO staff followed up with training and technical assistance on how to write action plans and track progress. With assessments and action plans completed, churches have successfully helped disparate communities gain access to fresh fruits and vegetables and to safe places where families can be physically active. Safe places where people can be physically active or, or to study or to learn or to talk to other people. Safe places are very important to a strong community. So help us build that. Now, Healthy Kids Healthy Michigan is a statewide coalition with over 100 government, nonprofit, public, and private organizations dedicated to reducing childhood obesity in Michigan through strategic initiatives. Other HKHM woo, letters, activities include adding body mass index surveillance to the state's immunization registry, Michigan Care Improvement Registry, or MCIR, educating pediatric health care providers on coding Medicaid for child obesity-related services as part of the Well Child Visit, and partnering with the Michigan Food Policy Council, MFPC, to support school gardens and other forms of urban agriculture. Now, then we have, finally, uh, the Michigan's uh, Nutrition and Physical Activity Self-Assessment for Child Care, NAPSACC. Ooh, please. Get involved and take a look at these things. The Michigan Nutrition and Physical Activity Program has partnered with the National Kidney Foundation in Michigan to promote healthy practices in child care ser settings, serving low-income communities. Since 2008, Head Start has used NAPSAC, a policy and environmental change tool, to access each Head Start Center's nutrition and physical activity policies, practices, and environments. In 2009 to 2010, 45 child care centers across Oakland and Wayne counties and the city of Detroit participated in the NAPSAC program, reaching 5,341 children served within the catchment area. Okay, well, that's the first part here. Uh, we're going to see a um, public service announcement, and we'll be back with uh, some uh, state information. Some, some uh, state information. Thank you so much. They say you don't have to be so strong, but this is my mother, my purpose. Strength is not optional. See, I lift her now like she raised me then, so I know my strength is super, but I'm still human. Oh, look who's here. Here we are back with the state. Here we are back with the state information. We're going to be talking about the Water Resources Division. Uh, they're protecting Michigan's environment and ensuring Michigan's future. The Water Resources Division, and you can find out this information online by going to the DEQ website. The Water Resources Division uh, administers three major programs, the Groundwater Discharge Permits Program, Surface Water Quality Program, and Water Resources Program. That include a number of activities involving protection of the environment. That's our place where we live. Groundwaters, that's the water that flows across the surface, and surface waters that exist, rivers and lakes and ponds. Um, uh, of the state for present and future generations. The mission of the WRD is to make Michigan's water safe and clean for recreating, fishing, drinking, and healthy aquatic ecosystems. And they're not safe right now. Gotta make them safe. Takes work. Wayne City, we're engaged. Need help. Let's do it. It's begun. Let's work it through. Five major goals provide definition to the mission. Enhance recreational waters. Ensure consumable fish. That's a little odd, right? Okay, that's okay. Play, don't eat the fish. Fish come second, all right, whatever. Protect and restore aquatic ecosystems. Whoa, if you did the third one, then the one, in, that's okay. Number four, ensure safe drinking water. Well, if you did number three, 
and then protect public safety. Looks like we could probably move that around, right? Okay, come to the meetings, come come talk. Our programs promote sound environmental stewardship of Michigan's land and water resources, and yes, they do, while recognizing the social and economic needs of the state, and yes, they do. The WRD has developed measures of success to define the expected outcomes for many of the programs, and they work hard on the activities that are affect or measure the quality and quantity of the waters of our state. They do work hard, and they will respond to you, and they will work with you, and they're good folks, and they earn their pay, and uh, we need to help them because they can't do it all by themselves. Groundwater Discharge Permits Program is uh, responsible for regulating the discharge of wastewater and other waste materials to the ground and groundwaters of the state and ensures that groundwater discharges in the state are properly authorized to discharge and that those discharges are protective of groundwater resources, public health, and the environment. And that's why we need to get involved. Now you'll, be fi you'll find some very interesting questions about this because they will, they, they're doing all that they can, these folks, right? But it's a local issue that we need to address. So there's the Surface Water Pro Quality Program, which uh, also uh, addresses aquatic invasive species and coordinates the implementation of Michigan's AIS state management plan across multiple state and agencies to prevent new introductions, uh, to limit the dispersal of established populations, develop a statewide interagency early detection, and manage and control them to minimize the harmful ecological, economic, social, and public health impacts that can happen from unwanted uh, uh, invasive species getting out of control. And then there's the aquatic nuisance control oversees the use of pesticides to control aquatic nuisance species and focuses on ensuring that chemical applications for aquatic nuisances are effective in controlling the target nuisance, nu nuisance species without harm to public health, recreation, or the natural resources of the state. That's another place where uh, we all need to get involved in. That's very important. They work with biosolids. Uh, that enhances uh, agriculture and silvicultural production in Michigan, and these are land applied and used to grow crops. This is very interesting information. You wouldn't think that the water quality folks would be involved in all this. Uh, industrial pre-treatment, pre they look at that. They take a look at that. National pollutant discharge elimination systems, uh, which is a subject of uh, interest and concern here in, this, in Wayne City. Come on, get involved. Lots of stuff to do. Come out. You can jump up and down. You can wave signs. Or you can participate and, and, and hold your hand up and, and give us your ideas because we certainly need assistance, right? National Pollutant Discharge Elimination Systems, non-point sources, operator training and certification, stormwater materials, surface water, ambient monitoring, which I love. It's great. Big data. Great opportunity for someone here in Wayne City. You can contact us. We'll talk more about that. Surface water restoration and protection. We're on that too, but we need more help. We need you to become we, so we can do it together. And uh, wastewater facility construction permits, if they're gonna build one and water withdrawal, if someone's taking water out to do a certain function, uh, like manufacturing. And then there's a water resources program, which they look over. It's the critical dune areas on the, on the lakes to keep them uh, clean and safe because they affect water quality, the dam safety, and we have a lot of dams here in Michigan. Some could be put back into use and some are getting knocked down. And then the floodplains, which we are in Wayne City, we are in a floodplain. Then there's uh, Great Lakes Submerged Lands, which is a wonderful, wonderful thing. We even have small portions of that occurring in uh, Wayne City. Hydrologic, hydrologic data collection and analysis, big data stuff again, again, cutting edge. Uh, modern things, wonderful things to learn and do, and you can learn about it and participate. Don't, don't, don't be concerned. Don't be concerned about it. it just... Okay, uh, Inland Lakes and Streams National Flood Insurance Program. Again, an issue here in Wayne City and probably if you have any recreational or other real estate somewhere that's anywhere near water. <laughs> and then uh, shorelands protection and management, which is a lot of fun, and uh, that's tied up with uh, getting the water quality better here in Wayne, Wayne uh, City. And the wetlands, which we have plenty of here in Wayne City. I wanna thank you for the second part here. We were talking about the, um, the Water Resources Division of the Department of Environmental Quality here in the, uh, uh, Michigan, and they certainly have their work cut out for them, and we would like to uh, support them in everything that we can. All right, we're gonna see a public service announcement. I'll be back for the last item. Hi, this is the third and final portion. This is the national information. We're dealing with fish again, or the national information. We're dealing with NOAA Fisheries, um, and that they're responsible for the stewardship of the nation's ocean resources. They're also here on the Great Lakes. They do show up and they do participate here because the Great Lakes are really, really big. 
And uh, with them surrounding Michigan State, we have a lot of interaction with the NOAA. Uh, both, uh, and, and recently, contact between the, um, uh, the needs of the water people here in the Great Lakes area, the water needs of the folks out on the West Coast and the East Coast has uh, begun. Very, very wonderful th stuff coming out of Wayne City. Now, uh, NOAA Fisheries is responsible for the stewardship of the nation's ocean resources and their habitat. We provide vital services for the nation, uh, productive and sustainable fisheries. That's really important. Safe sources of seafood, again, very important. The recovery and conservation of protected resources and healthy ecosystems, all backed by sound science and an ecosystem-based approach to management. And we all get involved, and we can have a voice, and we can help out. U.S. fisheries are among the world's largest and most sustainable. That means that we're the ones that can actually make this work. Seafood harvested from the United States federally managed fisheries is inherently sustainable as a result of the U.S. fishery management process. Using the Magnuson-Stevens Act, that's Magnuson-Stevens, M-A-G-N-U-S-O-N-Stevens, S-T-E-V-E-N-S, Act as the guide. NOAA Fisheries works in partnership with regional fishery management councils, and we have them around here in Michigan, both in the west, the north, the Upper Peninsula, Central, we're a big deal. Yep. So anyway, using the Magnuson Stevenson's Act as a guide, NOAA Fisheries work in partnership with regional fishery management councils to assess and protect the status of fish stocks, set catch limits, ensure compliance with fisheries regulations, and reduce bycatch. Bycatch is a big problem in the ocean where, for example, if you want to catch one pound of shrimp, often they'll pull out 10 pounds of bycatch, and you know what they do with it? Bye, catch. They throw it away. It's terrible. What a waste. Anyway, working on that too. Working on it. But you can see that if we don't pay attention, nothing will be done. And things are going to get worse. We want to get things better. That's what happens in Wayne City. The resilience of our marine ecosystems and coastal communities depend on healthy marine species, including protected species such as whales, sea turtles, corals, and salmon. And our reefs here in Michigan are very, very interesting. Now, under the Marine Mammal Protection Act and the Endangered Species Act, NOAA Fisheries works to recover protected marine species while allowing economic and recreational opportunities. NOAA Fisheries, also known as National Marine Fisheries Service, that's a great name, is an office of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. That's the NOAA. With the department within the Department of Commerce. This is business. <laughs> We have five regional offices, six science centers, and more than 20 laboratories across the United States and U.S. territories, and we work with partners across the nation. To learn more about them, go to NOAA Fisheries and, uh, for the, and sign up for their Fish News, which is a weekly e-newsletter, and you would think that there wouldn't be a whole lot in there, but let me tell you, these folks are busy. And uh, I was reading right off the uh, NOAA website about the fisheries work that they do. I want to thank you for your attention again. Wish you all well. Be healthy. Be happy. Going to be another public service announcement right at the end of this. And uh, there should be some links down in the comments for you if you want to go take a look at them. Thank you and have a great day.